All right. We are talking about Marjorie Kemp now and her excerpt from the book of Marjorie Kemp. I am going to show you the picture of her. You can see her. There she is. That is a obviously a rendition of her, not a picture, not a photo, but a rendition, an artist rendition of what she looked like. All right. So Marjorie Kemp, what a figure she is. My goodness. So intriguing. Um, <laughs> so I put a website in that has a fairly humorous life portrait of Mar Marjorie Kemp, though there may, may be some omissions slash exaggerations. Um, let's see if I can pull that out. Uh, this is, well, it's a long biography of her, but it's it's kind of funny too. So you might want to take a minute to read that. But um, I will synopsize some for your benefit so that you can enjoy. Um, and then there's a podcast that offers a an intriguing and 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 also productive information on Mary. I mean on Marjorie Kemp and her lifetimes and work. And then um, some YouTube documentary clips giving an intriguing perspective on Marjorie. Kemp. So that's all in the lecture. You have those links there. Well, as um, the private and sequestered, as private and sequestered as Julian of Norwich was, Marjorie Kemp was the exact opposite. She was prone to highly demonstrative displays of crying and shaking. Um, Marjorie could spend all day at churches praying and then lecturing whomever she met. So where Julian of Nor Norwich um, stayed at home and was kind of like a hermit, you know, and people came to her, Marjorie Kemp went out into society and she preached and she prayed and she shook and she cried. She was overcome by the spirit and she dressed in interesting clothing um, that was always showing her devotion to God. Um, so she you know, wore long robes and she wore a ring on her finger to, to show that she was the bride of Christ, even though she was actually married, right? Um, not only married, but she had 14 children's, children. So Marjorie lived from 13, th uh, 1373 to about 1438. And that, so that meant she died around 60, the age of 65. So Julian of Norwich uh, also died later in life. So they both had some, you know, long lives for that time period. Um, you know, with Julian of Norwich making it into, um, let's see, her 70s, she was 74, and then Marjorie Kemp living to 65. Julian of Norwich was born in 1342. Marjorie Kemp was born, um, as I said, in um, 1373. So she was about, was that about 30 years younger than um, Julian of Norwich. So Marjorie Kemp made a pilgrimage to Julian of Norwich to confirm whether um, she was doing the right thing. So so Marjorie wanted to have some answers. And so it's interesting. She went to Julian of Norwich, another female, another female religious figure to get confirmation um, that giving her life over to Christ was the right thing for Marjorie to do. Um, she had, Marjorie herself had had two divine revelations to give herself over to Christ, you know, and make her life um, as a servant of Christ. So she went to Julian of Norwich to confirm this call. And Julian did, in fact, confirm Marjorie's call. She told her, yes, you are doing the right thing with your life. You should turn your life over to Christ. So after 20 years of marriage and 14 children with her husband, Marjorie decided she would consider herself instead married to Christ. She despised carnal relations, in other words, sex with her husband thereafter, and eventually had him agree to live separately from her. Um, so talk about breaking the mold of medieval women. So remember, this is still during the Middle Ages when they lived. Um, and she said, you know what? I'm going to be married to Christ, even though I've given birth to 14 children with you, my husband, with whom I've been married for 20 years. We will no longer have sexual relations because I'm considered, I consider myself to be married to Christ and you need to move out. We need to live separately so that we don't have temptations anymore. All right. Um, 
let's uh wow with all the talk about how the men uh, dominated women women were subordinate to men women didn't have rights unless they were married to men or covered by their father's rights um so what the heck how could she do this right um somehow she got her husband to agree to do it well they made a bargain and we'll get to that marjorie was tempted at least once to have sexual relations with another man and she writes about this in her book of marjorie kemp but she turned uh, that man turned her down interesting she was tempted but he turned her down so she was able to remain true to her vow of chastity in her marriage to christ um so she writes about that temptation experience she dressed all in white and she wore a ring that said jesus christ is my love so she would um proclaim to everyone in her visual appearance that she was the bride of christ she wore all white and wore that ring um she seemed to have a sexualized relation with god it was kind of popular from the time period it was from the mystical tradition and they would kind of like describe their relationship with christ in in sexual terms i guess that dovetailed with her being the bride of christ and maybe also with the shakings and the cryings and things like that also it was of that mystical almost sexualized tradition of a relationship with christ she went on numerous pilgrimages all over in uh, i mean all over england and europe and even to jerusalem most englanders did not travel more than two miles from their home they mostly didn't even leave their village and here she was a woman during the Middle Ages, who not only traveled all over England, she traveled all over Europe, and she even went to another continent. She went to Asia. She visited Jerusalem there. So pretty amazing. She was definitely a woman well ahead of her times. She was even accused of heresy at one point, but managed to tell a morality tale and convince an archbishop that she was not actually a preacher and she wasn't a heretic because she was considered a heretic because she was a female who preached and women were not allowed to preach back then and so she had to say you know what i'm not preaching i'm just telling people how i feel i'm just telling you what i feel and i may be at a pulpit but i'm not preaching i'm just telling you how i feel so that's how she was able to get away with with preaching pretty amazing because some women were burned at the stake like Anne Askew well and and uh Marjorie Kemp lived in the Middle Ages and Anne Askew lived in the Renaissance which came later and so Anne Askew was burned at the stake for preaching uh views that didn't agree with um the Anglican Church but Marjorie Kemp and all of her bizarre views was not burned at the stake and she lived at an in, in even earlier time period so it was pretty amazing that she and julian of norwich got away with what they did and i say got away with because it was against the law and against the religious teachings now i think they're perfectly entitled to what they did but at the time period it would have been very unconventional and illegal and immoral um so neat that she did all that she did and she and the way she got her husband to move out is she bargained with him she made a bargain that if you moved out and didn't have sexual relations with me anymore i will pay all your debts now where she got the money i do not know but she paid off all his debts and she agreed to eat um dinner with him every friday so she agreed to pay off his debts before she went to jerusalem and then um she said they'd have dinner once a week so that's how she got him to move out uh, I don't know how she supported herself, though. It was kind of interesting. It was very hard for women to support themselves at the time. Um, I don't know if she got donations or, or what, but she supported herself. Now, Marjorie could not read or write. Uh, so Julian of Norwich, we believe, could read and write. Not sure if Julian of Norwich actually wrote her book of showings or if she dictated it. That's actually unknown. But we do know Marjorie kept dictated her autobiography her autobiography to a scribe probably a son or maybe a daughter even and they wrote it down so it's her composition she spoke the words but it was record the words were recorded by someone else so we are actually reading her her words um and actually this is interesting it's the first existing autobiography written in vernacular english now vernacular english means the English like of the everyday person, kind of like like what the common person would speak. So it's the first autobiography ever written in vernacular English, and it was composed by a woman. So pretty neat claim to fame there. All right, so that is Marjorie Kemp, and I um 
I leave you to enjoy the excerpt of hers that we read for class this week. We've got the little biography um, on Marjorie Kemp in the anthology, and then an excerpt from the book of Marjorie Kemp, which is that vernacular autobiography that she composed, the very first one in vernacular English. All right, so enjoy. All righty. I will meet you back with the next author in another video.